So now in this video, we're coming back to a circuit we covered before, except for we added a resistor here. So that's a positive feedback resistor. In any case, what we're doing is monitoring the voltage. We're waiting for a low supply voltage based on the value components we use, and that will determine the output. So if the voltage is high enough, we'll have a green LED. So let's say that's where we like our battery voltage or something. If the voltage drops low enough, we have a red LED that will light up. And so in the previous circuit, without this resistor, we set the voltage using an op amp, the LM358, of 5.1 volts at the non-inverting input. And we're comparing that with the voltage at the inverting input, which we have a fixed voltage divider right here. So once we got to about 10.2 volts, then it would be about the same voltage at the two of them. If it gets lower, then we'd have a lower voltage there, and since that's the inverting input, we'll have a high output. As long as the voltage is higher over here, the output will be low. So while the output's low, the green LED will light up, and when the output is high, the red LED will light up. And so now that brings us to the positive feedback part of this circuit, the uh, resistor, I should say, positive feedback resistor, and we're going to use 10 kilo ohms because a 5.1 volt zener down doesn't change its voltage terribly easy, but it does change a bit based on how much current is flowing through it. So when the voltage is high enough here that we have a low output, because remember this is going to be the opposite of the output. When this is high enough, the output is low. And uh, that will mean that the green LED lights up. So while that is low, it's also coming back here. So some of the current going through the resistor is being diverted to the output. That's less current through the zener. It actually lowers its voltage a little bit. So we'll have a lower voltage here. That's more range we have to drop the voltage by lowering the supply voltage to get to that point. And then the output will go high once we get this low enough. And uh, once this is high, now we have the opposite problem. So we got the high output, the red LED is lit up, but a little bit of current is also making its way to the zener, and it's making it so the zener voltage builds up a little bit. So now the voltage is a little bit higher here, it's lower there. We have to raise this uh, voltage by raising the supply voltage until we get uh, past that voltage that we set at the non-inverting, and then it bounces back to the opposite direction. That's our hysteresis range. So in any case, when the red LED is lit, we'll have to get to above about uh, 9.6 volts approximately. And uh, I think it's uh, pretty close to spot on with that one. Whereas uh, once the green LED is lit, we have to lower the supply voltage to about 8.3 volts approximately. I think it may be a speck above that, but uh, that's the approximate voltage before the red LED will light up. And so here is the pin layout for the LM358. There's two op amps on there. We're not going to use this one. We're just going to completely ignore it. We need to power it. So there's the positive supply. There's a negative supply. You can work with a single supply. It's a single supply op amp. And so ground is actually zero volts there. Now we have the output on top, the left pin. There's a couple divots. The inverting input right below it and the non-inverting right below it. So on the schematic we did, that's where they were positioned inverting above non-inverting. Sometimes on schematics they flip that, but the physical component, you have to make sure that you wire the uh, right inverting versus non-inverting circuitry to the right pin. And so here we are in the breadboard. I'll go over this quickly. We have the output, a one kilo ohm resistor going to the long lead, the anode of the red LED, short lead, the cathode going to ground. You gotta put them in the right direction for them to light up with uh, the one kilo ohm resistor here. We are going to the short lead, the cathode of the green LED. Long lead, the anode, is going to ground right there. The 10 kilo ohm, 10,000 ohm feedback resistor, positive feedback, is going from the output there to the non-inverting input right there. And now we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor from the positive supply, a 10 kilo ohm resistor in the negative supply. Value doesn't matter. As long as they're equal, you'll get half the supply voltage. Lower values, though, waste more current. The pin just looks at the voltage. They're both going to that uh, middle pin as far as the op amp is concerned, the inverting input. And finally, we have the zener diode, which hopefully is uh, easy enough to see. So we have the anode to the uh, ground pin there. That's how zener diodes work. They work reverse bias. And so that's going to ground. The 
cathode, there's a black band right there, that's the cathode, is to the non-inverting input right there. We have a 10 kilo ohm resistor, and so it's a somewhat high value resistor, makes it a little easier to change the uh, voltage of the Zener diode. And so now let's quickly test this, and I hit the uh, power button, that turns the output on. This unit is always on as long as it's plugged in. So we're at 13 volts, that's really the maximum we want to do because we're protecting the LEDs from one kilo ohm resistors. And so we should also uh, lower this. That was from an earlier video. I'll limit current to 20 milliamps. That way if we miswired something, hopefully we didn't fry anything. So in any case, let's uh, lower the voltage. So it should be around 8.3 volts. We went to eight, that was a little too far. So there we go, we went up enough. Let's work our way down by tens right there. So I think it's 8.3, let's stop at 8.4, and even 8.4 was uh, close enough, it looks like. So it is approximate, also bumping this, you kind of get voltage uh, changes. So in fact, let's add a capacitor. So now I have a 10 microfarad capacitor here along the supply rails. Remember they're polarized. That side uh, has to be more negative. There's a gray band even though it's not showing up. It's also got the uh, shorter lead. But in any case, this power supply, you bump it, you get uh, spikes. You get a really rapid voltage uh, change, but that should absorb that and help hold it long enough. So the uh, red LED is lit. Now the uh, green one is lit. Let's put that down, back down to eight. And I think it's down to about 8.3 before it will change back. So we'll see exactly how much it's going to take by uh, doing this. One at a time, there we go. It was a spot on 8.3. So now we got to go in the opposite direction. It's more than 9.3. I believe it's 9.6 right there. So uh, 9.8 maybe. So we will go over. Yeah, it was 9.6. So again. We can go to uh, exactly what it is by uh, just kind of inching up at uh, 9.5 and working our way up. So in any case, that's it for this video. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you watch one of the other ones that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. So it was uh, either 9.61 or 9.62 where it changed. But uh, check out the other videos. Make sure you click like, subscribe, the bell. Donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. I have links down in the description, but just watching as many videos as you can helps out a ton. So thanks to everybody that does that. I will see you in the next video.